Good morning. A great and blessed Sunday morning to each of you as you join us in this worship service. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, I welcome you on the 19th of July, the year 2020. And uh, I thank you for your congratulations as I have on my birthday shirt, a gift from my darling wife, as I celebrated my 76th birthday on Friday. And it was a grand and glorious day. Thank all of you all who, who, who came by, cards, letters, all the expressions of love, the parade. Uh, you all are too much. And you make me love you even more. To my family, to my children, Lisa and Damien, their families, to all my siblings, uh, my Aunt Fanny, all of them joined on the phone, my cousins, my nieces, nephews. God bless all of you all. You made that day the best ever. Amen? Amen. As we consider the times that we're in, there was a scripture, or there is a scripture that comes to mind that I think is appropriate to start us off on this morning. It's from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, and starting at verse 1, you'll find that these words are written. And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears, let him hear. That scripture says to us that at all times he's worthy of praise and worship. And that with which he blesses us, he expect, expects us to go out and multiply it. Every day we're sowing seed. Some days it's better than others. We sow seed that won't grow. Other days we sow seed that he blesses. And he's a God that blesses good seed every day. Even during the time of coronavirus, he continues to bless us and keep us. And so we must continue to work while it is day, for the night comes. The night's not here yet. It's still daytime and we've still got time to work. But the night is coming when no man can work. Amen? Amen. There's a song that capsulizes the love that Christian people have for Jesus and the insurance of his continuing power and love and blessings.
But Jesus is all the world to me. is all the world to me my life my joy my all in all he is my strength Eternal life, 
Congratulate you and thank you for your surveys. We got a high percentage of the surveys back and we are currently reviewing them, summarizing them in preparation for our next meeting of the Deacons and Trustees on Thursday night at 6.30 where we'll continue in this process of studying the data uh, the protocols, the statistics, and uh, reviewing your surveys for your suggestions and you're letting us know how you feel about what needs to be done before we can seriously consider re-entering the church. Be assured we'll take all of that into consideration. We will not be hasty. Uh, we will be led by the Holy Spirit's guidance to make sure that all things are ready. Thank you again for your exceptional support spiritually, the fellowship that we continue to show, the financial support. And again, for those of you who uh, like to do that electronically, we're now on uh, the internet with PayPal and GiveLify through the work of the Finance Committee and the trustees. Uh, we are upgrading our ability to serve this present age. And when we, uh, even though we're doing this while we're away, when we come back, you're going to recognize that we have grown as a church. Amen. And we will continue to do that. Let us pray for our sick and our shut-ins and our bereaved families. Pray especially for Sister Deborah Ford, who talked to me yesterday and may be aware that she's at home from the hospital. She went through her surgery well, and she's just uh, recuperating at home. Continue praying for her. Brother and Sister Terry and Sandra Robinson, he's in rehab now. And she's at home, both are recuperating. Sister Mary Alexis Garner, Brother Cecil Lee Jr. and his sister Brenda Miller, pray for them. Brother Bernard and Sister Camille Harris. Sister Mason B. and Evelyn Tucker, they join us every Wednesday night on prayer meeting and Bible study. And pray for Sister Maylois Minor, who was in the hospital this week. She's at home now, recuperating. And I talked with Mel Wee yesterday, and I, I let her know, as many of you will, that they continue to be in our prayers. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and loving, merciful Savior, we come before your throne as empty as we have ever been, but we come to you because we know that you are the fountain that never shall run dry, and that you are capable of filling us 
until we overflow with your love and kindness and we're supposed to be vessels of all of that and spread it, sprinkle it, shower it wherever we go. Bless us during these trying times that our faith might grow stronger. We might continue to sow seed, good seed, that you will bless, that you will water, and that you will grow. All to your glory and your honor. We claim and declare this in the powerful and precious name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. There is another song that I want to sing this morning. It's really about choices. We are born into a world where we make choices. We make decisions. Some good, some bad. But blessed be ye who have made Jesus your choice and given the choice all over again, you'd make that same decision again. Amen. Amen. In a world of many choices, Mr. Call of many voices, when they all call out to greet me. I turn my eyes toward thee, cause I found in you a loving friend, who go with me to the very end, I found in him a resting place. He calls me his very own. I choose you again and again. How many of y'all would say that? Again and again. I choose you again, dear Lord. I choose you again. I choose you again and again. I choose you again, all over again. Yes, I would. You mean so much to me, the Lord. I choose you again. Everybody, everybody. I choose you again and again. I choose you again and again. You mean so much to me, dear Lord. I choose you again. I choose you again and again. I choose you again. You mean so much to me, dear Lord. I choose you again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our message this morning comes 
from Acts, the 27th chapter. And starting with verse 13 of that 27th chapter, you'll find these words are written. And when the south wind blew softly, so their purpose, loosing dents, they sail close by Crete. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocladon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, strike sail, and so were driven. And we, being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in so many days appeared and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given the all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me, howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. That, brothers and sisters, is the source of this July. 19th sermon entitled Storms. Storms. The Eurocladons of life. Storms. Let us pray. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine that my soul look up with the I will be lost and dying. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we give thanks. And all the people said, Amen. My brothers and sisters, uh, knowledge and concern about weather forecast is a very important part of our lives. I, like you, have noticed that the lead information on the TV stations for the news is the weather on all channels. We have received information from Brian Busby on KMBC TV, from Joe Loria on KCMO, on WDAF TV, and Aaron Little on KCMO TV. They're usually the first and last voices that we see on each newscast. And obviously that information goes a long way to boost their Nielsen ratings, which equals the bottom line, which tells how much profit they're earning. The meteorologist, meter, meteorologist, uh, that I just named, make a lot of money. 
they are local celebrities, celebrities, and they have agents to promote their public appearances. My brothers and sisters, weather forecasting is a good job. It's a highly sought job, but weather forecasting is also a risky job, a risky business. Amen? We often say about weather in Kansas City, if you don't like it, just just wait a, wait a few hours, it'll change. Forecasters can predict the weather, but they can't prevent it. Amen? Forecasters can prepare for it, but they can't guarantee it. Forecasters can like it or not like it, but they can't change it or correct it. So predicting the weather, I'm sure you'll agree, it's a risky business. For if that prediction is right, they are heroes. If their prediction is wrong, they are the goat and they lose credibility and their standing straightens. And we've seen evidence of that when we are told that a storm is coming. Uh, and, 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 and the stores of Price Chopper Hen House are filled with people going to get water, uh, expecting a heavy snowfall. And then we get a drifting of snow, get some get some snowflakes and, and, and you've got all that milk and bread and stuff uh, in your house a week but there's no storm and we get upset as much as Christians can get upset. Amen? We all pay attention to the weather and adjust our lifestyles accordingly. Certain weather patterns help us to determine what to wear, whether to go out or whether to stay at the house. The weather where you live also influences what kind of automobiles you buy. That's why there are more convertibles in California, Arizona, and Florida than there are in Minnesota, Montana, and Alaska. Amen? Amen. Some people pay more attention to weather patterns and forecast than other people. A storm is a part of the forecast. But I found out something that's very interesting. I found out that whenever a storm is coming, the forecasters not only tell us the expected time that the storm will arrive, they also tell us the direction from which the storm is coming. Amen? Sometimes the conditions that produce storms can be seen forming and moving in a certain direction. For instance, hurricanes form out over the, the oceans and they can, they can tell as it builds up force and power and they can tell what part of the coast should be on the alert. That's in spite of the fact that your president might use a sharpie to try to change the direction of the storm. Amen? But in that situation, warnings can go out, preparing people to take steps to protect themselves and their property. However, some storms, brothers and sisters, give you a little warning. They just pop up spontaneously and catch everybody by surprise, wreak and destruction, and sometimes death. My brothers and sisters, I am a proud graduate of the Sumner High School class of 1961. Sumner High School, but I'm not a scientist. However, when I feel the temperature go up and coming down, and 
I hear there's a rise or fall in the barometric pressure. When I see the lightning flashing and I hear the thunder roll, when I see the wind bend trees and break off tree limbs and hail on the windshield, when I see funnel clouds moving, I'm sure that regardless from where it started, a storm, hallelujah, is coming. Storms just keep on coming. Most of you listening to this message today realize that our lives are filled with storms and they just keep coming. Some of us have thought and hoped that when we would come through a particularly tough storm that that would be it and that we'd be out of storms, if not forever, but for a while. But we have found that the opposite is true, that storms just keep on coming. If you have been through a financial storm, you're expenses exceed your income that and at the middle of the month you have more months left than you have money when you when you get your washer fixed and then the transmission on your car goes out just when you pay off one bill and go out to the mailbox you find that there are several more that have replaced it you shake your head and say storm Keep on coming. Most of us have had some physical storms, not just financial. We've had physical storms. Some of us have been wrestling with sickness for a long time. But just as soon as you get better, just as soon as you start feeling better, the doctor gives you a clean bill of health, something else breaks loose, some pain, some ache, a change in your vitals, blood flowing from your nose. I tell you, brothers and sisters, we get sick all over again because the storms just keep on coming. As we speak, the world is caught up in a, a pandemic. caused by COVID-19, coronavirus. Some of us have been through typhoid. Some of us were born and raised during the time of polio. We've seen Ebola. We've seen We've seen all of those, and, 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 and just when they get through, you will start to think that that's it for the storms, but then the storms just keep on coming, such as the one that we're under right now. In our lives, we've had some emotional problems. Some emotional challenges when everything seems to be going backwards. Maybe it's a divorce. Maybe it's a layoff. Maybe one of your children has a substance abuse problem. Possibly it's the fact that the death angel has stopped by your house and taken a loved one or a close friend and there's a hole in your heart and your life that cannot be filled. But just as soon as you start to heal, hello somebody, just as soon as you start to gain some semblance of peace, just as soon as tears stop falling, you get your head screwed on right. Something else, something even more evil than Senator Sinister will pop up from a position you never expected. 
and turn your life upside down. Storms just keep on coming. In our lives, we've known some spiritual crises. Amen? Our faith has been shaken. Our beliefs battered. Our soul's salvation was called into question. Somewhere along the way, we lost the joy that we once knew. But just as soon as you get your spirit right, just as your soul starts to get happy, just as soon as you get a song in your heart and see a light at the end of the tunnel, you recognize the light is on the, the head of a locomotive train heading down your way through a tunnel. And it takes clapping out of your hands, takes shouting out of your mouth. And you realize, storms, I said storms, just keep on coming. When faced with that reality, there's a natural tension. Why is it that storms keep coming? not just from a weather standpoint, but physically and financially and emotionally and spiritually. I really want to know why storms just keep on coming. Perhaps there are some lessons in storms that we're not seeing. Perhaps there's some meaning we're not getting. Perhaps there's some insight to be gained that is escaping us. Why is it that storms keep coming? I remember doing visits at my grandparents' house in Philip. They lived in a house that had a tin roof. And when we would come down, my cousins, Lorenzo, uh, Elijah, their sisters and brothers, we would all gather and there would be eight of us plus the others in that small house in Mississippi. And we'd be enjoying each other, keeping up all kinds of fuss and racket. Then all of a sudden a storm would come up and we'd hear the raindrops and sometimes the hail would hit that tin roof and it, it sounded like a, a, a drum beat, a thousand, a million drum beats on or beats of a cymbal on that tin roof. Big Mama would come into the room where we all be playing and laughing and she said, I want everybody to sit down and shut up. A storm is here. And when a storm comes, that means God is talking. And when God is talking, everybody in this house stops whatever they're doing and sits down. Sit down, shut up, and listen because God is talking. You know what? Before my 76th birthday, I realized that Big Mama was right. That when storms come into your life, you ought to stop whatever it is you're doing. Slow your pace. Chill out. Shut up. Sit down. And start listening because God is talking. When storms come into our personalities, God is talking. When, when, when storms come into our homes, 
God is talking. When storms come in at the church, listen because God is talking. Now, brothers and sisters, we may not want to hear what God is saying. Amen. But when the storms come, be still. Shut up. God is talking. And when God, hello, hello somebody, when, when God is talking, everybody ought to listen. Just in case you might have forgotten, the one who's in charge of the sunshine is also the superintendent of the storms. In case you, you forgot, he who works with the wind also is the boss of the rain. He who sends the snows in winter also ushers in the flowers of springtime. Brothers and sisters, I don't, I don't know about you. I can't speak for you. But that God is in charge of the storm. And our job is to learn the lesson he teaches us by the storm. Amen? Sometimes he doesn't say much. But if we listen in the midst of the storm, there will be a still small voice and all it says is be still and know that I am God I will be exalted among the heathen I will be exalted in the earth brothers and sisters perhaps in the storms we start to complain but I need to tell you, you ought not complain. And you ought not ask, Lord, why am I going through, through this? The question you ought to ask is, what does the Lord want me to get out of this? What does he want me to learn? Your complaining doesn't mean, doesn't mean a thing because storms, Say it with me, somebody. Just keep on coming. And maybe, maybe the point will be made better if we had some expert testimony from someone who knows about the storms. Amen. So, so, so let's let's see what let's see what Noah. Let's call on Noah and see. But he might say because witness, ain't he? Uh, he was in a storm that lasted 40 days and 40 nights. He was able to save his family and two of each animal on earth with which God replenished the earth. So what did Noah learn? Noah said, I learned that God Gave me a rainbow sign. He said, no more water, be fire next time. Amen? Well, who are we going to call next? Well, what about Noah? N N Noah knows something about storms. Excuse me, Jonah knows something about storm. Jonah disobeyed God and boarded a ship to Joppa rather than sail to Tarshish as he was instructed. So God, as God is empowered to do, he got his attention. He sent a storm into Jonah's life to get his attention. And Jonah was cast out of the ship when they found out that he was A-W-O-L, or a -W -O -L, he was absent without God. And he was close to drowning 
in the sea during the storm and ended up in the belly of a whale. What did Jonah learn? Jonah said, I learned that when God is after you, you can run, but you can't hide. Amen? Finally, my brothers and sisters, the Apostle Paul was on a ship headed to a jail in Rome where he was to be a prisoner and stand before Caesar. And as they set out in the storm, they ran in, in the sea, rather they ran into a storm with strong winds and rain. And the Bible said it was such a tough storm, they called it a Eurachlodon. Hello, somebody. Some of us have been through a Eurachlodon. On that ship with Paul, they discovered they couldn't guide the ship, so they just let it, let it go. And the storms, They, they undergirded the ship and pulled down the sails, but that didn't help nothing. The storm kept on coming. They went below deck and started throwing out cargo overboard, but the storm just kept on coming. They, they had been in the storm for 14 days. No sun shining by day, no stars at night. The storms just kept coming. And all of a sudden, Paul stood up and said, Sirs, while you fellows were fighting the storm and struggling in the sea, I, I've been on my knees in prayer. While y'all been struggling, I've been having a little talk with the Lord. And I came to tell you to fear not. God is in control. He still sitting high and looking low. He's able to save us. All you got to do is hang on. Don't give up and stay on the board. Stay on the board. Stay on the board. Paul said that when the storm kept coming, they lost their anchor and waited. And I heard Roxy Pilate say at the Antioch Baptist Church, if I just hold out till tomorrow, if I just keep the faith now, if, if I just hold out to tomorrow, everything will be all right. Because even though I don't know who holds tomorrow, I know who holds my hand. I know who's in charge of the storm. He went through a storm himself. He didn't have to. He did it for you and me. Hung, bled, and died on an old rugged cross. He was buried in a bottle of tomb on Friday. But on Sunday morning, he got up from the grave. He survived his Eurachlodon and says to us, we can do the same. Because he will help us. He will lead us. And he will guide us. And though the storm. Keep on raging. In my life. And sometimes. I feel. Like I just can't make it through. I rest. I fear not. I don't have no. Misapprehension. Because my soul is anchored 
in the Lord. Let the storms keep coming. My soul is anchored in the Lord. Euroclodons, coronavirus, sickness, whatever. My soul is anchored in the Lord.
shelter in the town. He's a shelter in the town. He's a shelter. seas of life but we have ultimate faith and confidence in you because in your omniscient and almighty power you can command the storm there are instances where just your voice, just one word, just the lifting and the waving of your hand changes. There is an occasion written where you were out on the sea. And a storm came up. And the disciples who had been with you for three years started to feel threatened by the storm. So they came down to wake you up from your nap and said, Master, don't you care? We know he cares. Because just like he woke from his nap and got up and said, Peace, be still. He still wields that influence today. We ask you, Lord, to walk with us, to lead us, to guide us, to continue to hold on to your unchanging hand. This we pray and this we commit to do through faith. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you, thank you. And I want to acknowledge uh, the, uh, the aunt of uh, uh, Sister Charlotte O'Neill. They informed me, she and Sterling informed me this morning that aunt is 106 years old. Mm. So, God bless, amen. Tune in on Wednesday for Bible study and prayer meeting. We're having a great And I see deacons and trustees on Thursday night at 6.30. Amen? Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. I want Layla, Sarah, John, John, and Harper to help me. Let the church say amen. Sister Phillips, let the church say amen. Sister Little Melwe, God has spoken. Brother Garth. Let the church say amen. We're going to do it one more time. Chris, Christy and Andre, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Carol, God has spoken. Sister Ford. Let the church say amen.